Hi everyone, it's Mike with Presentation Plus Ups, and in this episode, I'm going to start the first of a series of what I'm going to call morphology sessions. And we'll start with images. So what I mean by that is that we are going to unpack some tips and strategies in PowerPoint to really fully leverage the morph transition to create some fantastic effects. Let's get started with images. So the first one is this concept of adjusting the transparency from slide to slide. So I'm gonna back this one up for a second. And you're gonna notice that we have one slide and then a second slide that just melts in and that image just slides right in. Now, how we're achieving that effect here for you is on slide one, I have my selection pane open and I want to make you aware here that we do have an image. We do have this image on slide one and it is the same image that's on slide two here. Same exact image to prove it. I'm gonna select this image and I'm gonna double click it. Now when you double click it, that opens up this picture format. So let me unclick that for a second and I will, actually I don't even need to double click it. It looks like I can just select that image. I can do it at, at the selection pane level or I can hunt around for it. And on the picture format, you can go over here to transparency and you've got different options for transparency. This is just about completely transparent. You can actually click this little drop down and, and have a slider. So that's one way you can get to it. The other way you can get to this is you can right click the image, go down to format picture, and then you've got this little box over here, this icon of an image. And there is under this picture transparency is your transparency feature where you can adjust it, okay? So you can play with it. In this case, I want it completely empty. And this image, I am going to supersize it. I want it huge when it's invisible. So one of the ways you can do this is you can select the image and then hit shift up arrow to supersize an image. Okay, you can make it ridiculously large. I will use control, middle, wheel, mouse, and let you see how big I'm making this picture. I'm just making it huge. And then I'm going to use my center alignment tools. And just to give you an idea, so your slide is technically the size of that little grid. So we're at 10% view. So you're seeing all of the area outside or what I call off stage over here. So let's just go back to our picture and transparency so you can get an idea just how big that image is relative to the actual slide. All right. Now on both of these two slides here, I'm going to select them both and I'm going to go to transition and you're going to notice I have the morph transition applied. That's my favorite. And I think it must be Microsoft's too because they have it as the very first option right after the none transition, which is zero transitions. And what I've done though is I, the default is two seconds. I like to set it to 1.25 as my personal default and then have this transition go. And by the way, if you need to do that and you're not familiar with how to do that really quick and effectively, go to the view menu, go to slide master, and then pick your layouts and select morph, put your transitions to 1.25 and then hit apply all. And so that'll make sure that every one of your slide masters has that transition. And then what you can do within the slide master is just close it and then go back to normal. Okay. So let's see how this transition plays out. So we are going from 0% over here with this ginormous picture down to gonna have this essentially be about the size of the slide and have it kind of suck in and go from 0% to eh, probably more like 50, 60% transparency. So let's just see how that looks. Real quick, we'll go into presentation mode. I will advance the slide. And you're gonna see it gives you a very cool effect. I mean, this is something that's far beyond a typical transition effect. So I like it. I think that's the kind of thing it adds a little spice to a presentation, whether this is something you're doing virtual or imagine this on a big screen and that gets you kind of excited. Okay, so that's the first one is just this concept of adjusting transparency. And I think we could also say adjusting scale on that as well. So let's go to our second image morphology tip. And this would be the idea of cropping 
and shifting the image. So let's back this one up here. We're using the same image and just giving some visual effects to this. So you can see that when you take an image, take it away from your slide master and bring it to the working view, you can really add some next level effects. Okay, so crop and shift. Crop and shift is what we're gonna do on this one. So essentially with this, what we're going to use is the crop tool. Now I've added mine to the quick access toolbar. If you've not, what you'd want to do is you'd want to go to the picture format. You'd want to go to crop and right click it and add it to your quick access toolbar. Now, if you do that, you will always have it right up here somewhere, wherever you have it selected. But in my case, I've selected the crop tool and you can see that all this area in the black is where the image has been cropped. So I'm just going to duplicate this slide by selecting it and I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it. And let's just do a couple things. First, let's kick that transparency back to 100%. We're gonna hit Crop, and let's just say we want to crop this sort of, zoom it right in here to the middle. So a little shortcut for that is you can hold down Control while grabbing one of these handles, and it will take each side equally while holding down Control. So this is another little tip and strategy for you and uh, so let's just say randomly that looks good, okay? We want this image to decrease in size. So if you'll recall, your tip there was hold down shift, down arrow. Remember, up arrow goes bigger, down arrow goes smaller. And that's snapping just about perfectly to the size of the slide. And I'm going to use my left alignment tool and just snap that right over. So if you don't have your alignment and justification tools. Spend about five minutes under the home menu, the arrange menu, go down here and under align, right click each one of these little options for left align, center align, right align, top, middle, and then distribute. If you have multiple objects and you want them to be equally distributed, do yourself a favor, massive help. But you can see right there very quickly, you can get this adjusted. Okay, so super quick. Again, the morph transition is applied. So let's just take a look at how that works in impact. You notice we're probably at about, I'm gonna say 60% transparent. So that's still a little bit of, of punch through on that. Next slide moves it over 100%. Um, rather it's 100% opaque or 0% transparent. And we've got a nice little nifty effect there. So something that you simply couldn't do with conventional animation. So good stuff. Let's move on to our third one. And this would be the idea of using the background image just as a background texture, but then blurring it. So let's just take this and let you see we're nice and crisp. And now the image will blur and then reduce transparency. So in this case, what we have going is if I have my selection pane open again, and I'll go ahead and just fit this this slide here to the, the, the main viewport is you'll notice that the image is locked. So in your selection pane, you can now lock and unlock images if you have the latest version of Office 365. And you'll know if it's locked because you'll get this little border around it. But now we have that ability to then do things like uh, insert text boxes over the top of this and move these text boxes around without knocking around this image. Now, if this was unlocked, we could easily, oops, grab the image, we've got problems. So this is giving us Photoshop or InDesign level control now, which is a good day. So what I'm saying here is one of the good things we can do is we can reduce that opacity. So I'm gonna unlock this for a second. And so essentially what we're going to do is double click it we're gonna go back to transparency and you can see we've reduced it. So they give you some nice defaults and you can kind of play around with that and see how much you wanna reduce it. So I'm gonna set it about right there. Second thing I'm going to do is go to artistic effects. And under artistic effect, there's all kinds of things you can do. You can do Andy Warhol stuff, you can do pixelization things, mosaic. My personal favorite go-to for artistic effects is right here on the far right. It is essentially, what is that, the 
fifth column, second row, it's the blur effect. And it will put a Gaussian blur on your image. So let me just kick that to full transparency so you can see the difference. I'll double click it. I'm gonna go and set the artistic effect back to none and you'll see it's super crisp. And I'm going to double click it again, go artistic effects, blur, and then transparency. And let's just knock that down a titch and see how that works from slide to slide. So we're cropped, we're gonna uncrop it by extension, blur it and just make it a background. So the idea there would be if you just wanna add a little more texture, you want a little bit of that uh, savoir faire, if you will, for your slide, you don't want it to just be a basic slide. Well, you can do that. And in fact, what you can actually do is kick that way down, make it super transparent if you wanted to. And in that case, you can't even hardly see it. So you could go, all right, that's, that's a little too much. You could go format picture, take it, and let's bring that to, I don't know, let's just say 75%. We're gonna go in here and hit 75% enter. And uh, yeah, so I think that's another nice little trick for you is, is having that ability to have it as a background texture and a blur, and that's kind of cool. Okay, two more for you would be this idea of what the image of, if you, sometimes you want to break things up, you don't perhaps always want a full bleed slide, so why don't we go ahead and use a crop, change the background image or background of the slide itself to something like white, so you notice this was a black background. Now we're transitioning to a slide with a slide master that has a white background. So in this case, the unpacking is if I go to my view menu and we're gonna go back to our slide master and you're gonna notice I have some darker backgrounds and I have a white slide master background. So this slide, if we look at the layout of it, is using the light non-drop shadow background. So simply by taking uh, and inserting a new slide, selecting my right clicking, and I'm gonna go down and just pick a basic bullet slide. I'm gonna take this image, I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna paste it. Now I'm gonna wanna make sure this is always in the same layer hierarchy, which meant it was on the background. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm going to undo that artistic effect I'm gonna make this full 100% uh, opaque. I'm gonna hit crop. And let's just say we wanna to switch to a different part of our image. And I'm just gonna knock this down using my shift down arrow, knock this over to the right, and maybe say, yeah, I want a little more, maybe a little more on that. So let's bring this thing over. Incidentally, if you hold down Alt while you're cropping, cropping, you get a very nice, precise crop too, all right? And then we might say we want both of these to be eh, something like that, all right. So in this case, you're gonna see immediately, because we have the morph transition already applied, you're gonna get a very slick effect with very little effort. And that's what I'm all about, is very little effort. I want you to work fast and efficient. I'm assuming you're a corporate professional and you're not doing this just for fun. And yeah, you can see we've got some cool stuff going in this case. In fact, on this image, if we take a look at this, you can even do something such as apply a drop shadow, but in this case, an inner drop shadow. And you'll notice that is giving a look where the image is sitting below the background. So it's giving you even more of a, a three-dimensional effect. Okay, so in this case, we've got just a good old fashioned slide. These are some of my, my screeds, my personal things. I think bullet points are generally terrible unless you're doing a recap slide like this. You notice that all of the other slides, I really believe one slide really should represent one bullet point. You set up your master slides in a way that makes this all happen. It's shockingly easy. You couple that with morph transitions and you can optimize PowerPoint and here's another transition. So here's an example where we're taking the same slide and all we're doing is we're adjusting what's in the crop zone. So to do that, I'm gonna take my last lesson for you. I'm gonna hit the crop shortcut. And all we need to do is hold down shift 
and grab this asset and we can slide it around and constrain the proportions and you're going to get a very cool effect okay so i'm looking over here at slide four and slide five and i want this to have a noticeable change so i'm going to slide this over this way and you're going to get a cool effect okay so just simple ways that you can in a very shockingly easy way adjust and add some life to your presentations little shiny object syndrome, but also some ways to add some sophistication. That is our morphology for today. If you have some, whether it's presentation questions, virtual presentation questions on how to use things like OBS to achieve some of these effects that I'm doing, post your comments below. I'm here to help. Want to have some fun with it. I'd love to grow the channel. Of course, like, subscribe, hit that notifications button if you find value in this. But in the meantime, thanks so much and please make it a great day.